the only other thing I regret probably is working with some of the people that stuck with it. A few artists, you know, like Jay and a couple other guys, Toomp and those guys, stuck with all of this stuff and wrote it out, and now, you know, they're doing very well. So I think maybe if I would have... I think I have too much pride. Once I get scammed on something or if I feel something not's going my way, I just either move on to something else or I don't know, I just didn't want to deal with it. So kind of just did my own thing, but it probably would have been smart if I would have would have stayed with some of the people who uh, I was working with before and uh, maybe go in that direction. Um, like I said, I'm kind of into drum and bass now and break beats and trance and stuff like that. It's just so many ways to go. Um, just to, there's a lot out there to do, so uh, it's much easier now to do it if you're on your own. You don't have to deal with so much of the other stuff, but it's all a learning experience. The uh Ed Griffin story is a sad one, and all the people on the documentary have touched on it, uh, kind of how they heard what happened. Did you ever kind of hear the story or of, of what happened to him? I never heard the story of Eric Griffin. Um, you know, I don't, uh, I've heard so many different things, uh, and you got to give shout out to the, one of the Triple M bass guys that got shot also. Um, same thing with Fat Rome that was with uh, Gigolo Tony, he got shot and killed. A lot of tragedy. Um, Eric Griffin, though, man, what a what a, a great mind to lose. This guy was a great producer, and uh, uh, just got to give much props to him. I mean, him, Eric Griffin, Pretty Tony, and just a couple other guys really were the staples of the Miami-based music, and uh, just just tragic. I don't really know the story, but uh, definitely a, a great loss. I've heard some stories about Eric Griffin, um, about his creative approaches. Um, what helped him be creative, uh, some funny stories, uh, but I, I don't want to, I won't say anything about those, but whatever he did, uh, his, everything he touched was, uh, he was like Midas, everything he touched. I remember uh, I was in a DJ contest against a guy named um, Bad Boy Bill uh, down in Miami, and uh, I was better than him, but he came down and, and, and won the contest, the Hot 105 contest, beat me at my own game. Uh, pulls out a rubber dick and starts scratching and all of my cuts and backing up and beat juggling and all that stuff didn't mean anything compared to that rubber dick that came out. So he ended up uh, beating me in that contest, but um, we became friends. He was a, a DJ up in Chicago, one of the original WBMX5 mixers that house music and all that came from. And I would send him tracks, I would because they liked Miami bass music up there, believe it or not. Sometimes I would send him tracks. And I remember, uh, he did Jealous Fellas, right? Eric Griffin, yeah. Yeah, I remember sending him Jealous Fellas. And, um, man, he said that, that record just took off in Chicago. So I just told him, get anything with Eric Griffin on it, man, and you got a hit. Give the DJ a break. Uh, make it mellow. All those tracks. Just, guys, great producer. It's, just, it, it's tragic. Uh, whatever happened to him. Uh, it's just sad that we uh, took that loss in the Miami. I wonder where he'd be at right now um, if he was still producing. Um, I, I, I was going to touch on it in this, but you know, I don't want to name drop or I don't want to brag about anything. That's just not my personality. Back in the day, I was pretty cocky, dude. Uh, but that was just like a DJ thing, you know. It wasn't. Um, that's just how it was, and it was a fun thing. Uh, you know, let's battle, and you know, I'm better than this guy, or that guy sucks, or whatever, and I got this or I got that. But um, I do. I, I was dating this girl, this Latin girl that lived in Boca, and her brother was friends with uh, with with James Sheffer, Jimbo Je Jealous J or Jim Johnson, what he goes by now. And um, I remember her brother always asking for my mixtapes, and I'd have some mixtapes. Some would be scratching and transforming, some would just be mixes. And uh, I give him the mixtape, and he'd be like, "Oh yeah, good mix, good mix." And then uh, he would be like, yeah, but don't you have any with scratching, blah, blah, blah. So uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I guess, yeah. So I made some with scratching. And, uh, you know, then I noticed, oh, yeah, I got my friend J Jimbo. Come over our house. He's got a set up there. Come over and do some scratches Funny and shit. Stuff, right? And then I ended up becoming friends with them. And um, they would tell me, you know, all this stuff. Uh, uh, you know, it was just, it was funny. Even the tape that you're going to see of the DJ contest, um, I didn't even know I was being filmed. Like I said, there was no YouTube back then, and we just had to make up stuff 
or we had to get it from somewhere else, which which was fine. It was just funny, but I think um, I sold my 808 that I got from Adrian. I sold um, sold that to, to um, Cut Up Def Records. I think that was their first. Uh, that was a drum machine they used in a lot of their tracks, and I remember them being pissed that the uh, the cowbell was broke on it, which I didn't tell them. I kind of slid it by him, but it's, it's fucking 808 still. What are you gonna do?